Assalamu alaikum and a very warm welcome. Here is another lecture series on geotechnical engineering. So right now we are currently in the last chapter which is on geotechnical hazard which is in chapter 7. So altogether we have a total of 7 uh, chapters that we have discussed and here's the last one. So before we start we like to know what is geotechnical hazard is all about. So things that you need to know is the question. So there's a what, where and how. Okay. So from this um, presentation it is expected from you guys to actually uh, explore more about the local geotechnical hazards surrounding your community okay so what what are the geotechnical hazards that's a common question that we have in mind and the second one is what are the common types of geotechnical hazard threatening our community so in terms of hazard there are common types so we have to know that uh, the third question will likely be of where in our communities do we expect geotechnical hazard to happen? Of course, we gotta, we gotta be more detailed about geotechnical hazard. We gotta actually identify where in the location is the hazards gonna happen. So, of course, you need study and monitoring and observation. Is there a map that will show where geotechnical hazard might occur? So one question in mind is that maybe people have developed some map or information about the hazard okay so the next one would be uh, how can you deal with geotechnical hazard in your area okay what are the things the community can do before during and after a hazard has occurred okay so all of this is being answered in this chapter so you got to pick up from all the uh, slide that we'll present it later this will answer all this question definition okay what is geotechnical hazard is basically a natural hazards uh, let me get my highlighter okay what what color do you want okay let's say yellow color okay so there are natural hazards which result from geologic phenomena such as landslide um, earthquake and floods Okay, uh, they are triggered by soil rock failure due to natural or human causes. Okay, so that's the definition of geotechnical hazard. Okay, before we move on further into this chapter, you uh, should understand the difference between hazards and risks. Okay, hazard in statement is the probability of an event occurring. Okay. And risk is the potential for economic loss for individual location, communities, or even wider areas. If you were to look at a simple uh, figure over here, so hazard is something that has the potential to harm you. Okay? So when you're standing uh, next to a shark, so you're on land and the shark in the sea, so a shark is the sea, the shark in the sea is the hazard. So this is a hazard setting. Uh, where else if you look at risk which is the likelihood of a hazard causing harm is when you're swimming with a shark so that's a high risk actually so differentiate between a hazard and a risk now let's look at another figure of differentiation so again a hazard is something that has the potential to harm you okay so you're 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 sitting in a house and there's a lightning outside so the lightning is a hazard and a risk is when you're standing under a tree during a thunderstorm. That's a high risk if you're standing uh, beside a tree during a thunderstorm. Okay, let's move on to geotechnical hazards in Malaysia. I'll just pick up some of uh, newspaper cuttings for us to discuss about hazards that's happened in our local settings. The first one would be um, on this sinkhole. So this is a sinkhole over here. All right, one and two portion over here. So this is caused by a burst water pipe along Jalan Imbin uh, in the city center uh, uh, back in 2014, July 2. Okay, so this is what happened uh, due to the uh, burst water pipe. 
So what happened? Uh, the consequences is of course a major roadblock, okay? Because this is where all the uh, vehicles keep coming in and out of the city center. So this is one of the geotechnical hazard that occurs in our local setting, which is the sinkhole. Okay. So here's another picture of that sinkhole. Okay. So in the future, you're gonna be here observing the phenomenon and come up with some uh, mitigation plan of this how to repair this type of uh, failure because it's the main road that people use so you gotta have a, a fast or quick uh, response to this type of failure okay so you need to think of something that's out of the box in a very quick uh, timing All right so this is a second case okay uh, it's a another sinkhole but it is caused by uh, an impact okay an impact from a portion of a building that fell down okay if you want to look at a bigger picture so this is the 21 story building so during a heavy rain thunderstorm okay the portion of this uh, building fell down okay and hit the road and it penetrated six meter inside and it brought along a car inside which was the my v and there was a person inside so the person was dead got buried uh, to a depth of six meter down there so it's actually exposing some weak uh, strata under this building next to it okay Now the third case that I would like to share is on a landslide. So back in May 1999, more than 10,000 residents in Bukit Antara Bangsa were trapped when a 100 meter long landslide occurred at 5.20 a.m. And it cut off the only access road to the hilly residential area. There were no casualties. Okay. So when you're building a residential next to a hilly area it actually has a high risk okay so take note of this in the future risk for the person on top and also for the person living below it okay and the next geotechnical hazard will be on uh, flooding okay so this occurs in Kelantan okay and it affected more than 21,000 victims, okay, people, due to this flood area. And this is after the flood has uh, settled. So you can see the height of the mud is reaching to the top of this house, which means it's pretty severe. Okay, so this is after the clean, become very happy. So these are the faces that we need to look at whenever a disaster has finished okay and these are the location where the victim are being placed so you see a tent and all the um, main facilities are being dumped uh, in this small uh, tent over here okay so what I want to bring is that you can provide a better solution for the victim okay because they need to squat in tents and living in cramp national service camps okay this is a post disaster so as an engineer you need to provide some comfortness to the people around you because you have all the knowledge about technology in engineering so why not come up with a proper solution rather than a tent There's something questionable in today's setting where we have a lot of casualties happening and the thing that we provide is a uh, it's not up to st standard you see that you see how they live in this it's not comfortable and it doesn't reflect whatever you're learning in geotechnical or engineering okay you should come up with something more okay so when you have a disaster you should think out of the box okay the first thing is to make people feel safe and they are happy whenever they are okay so this is a, a very good concept a unique bamboo living pot concept 
which is a study in disaster proof design okay rather than building uh, a low cost building why not go for a proper building that can actually uh, minimize the effect of uh, disaster okay so i urge you guys to come up with this type of thinking okay when you design don't design based on your limitation you got to design to cater for people uh, comfortability okay so that's how you create a uh, harmonious living okay don't just go for low cost housing it's for me it's 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 the it's not representing whatever knowledge that you have gained from your study okay if we want to give to the people we give to the maximum okay we give our best don't give like a so so thing and that's that's not appropriate okay so this concept uh, we have a 48 a meter of uh, length and 8 meter of width over here so that's a space for the victim to actually spend time after the disaster okay we have a library space over here of course you're going to have some medical uh, infrastructure in the middle and a community hall where everyone gathers okay so this is something you should come up with okay right the next topic will be on the significance of geotechnical hazard information so every country needs to have an information on geotechnical hazard to get them prepared and to have some mitigation plans okay because it will affect in terms of the uh, safeness and also in terms of the cost okay so knowing and identifying the different hazard uh, common in our country is a key and vital step to reduce loss of life and property damage okay the more information you have means the more better okay the least information means you're losing a lot that's all about it okay so let's look at different types of geotechnical hazards okay so starting from this chapter we'll be discussing we'll be looking at different type of uh, geotechnical hazard so the first one g6 we'll be looking at landslide hazard so this is uh, related back to your slope stability study so the sliding of a mass of soil or rock on or from a sloping ground so this is a sloping ground so that's the landslide so landslide is a reaction to gravity okay and it is often triggered by various conditions such as you got heavy rain okay earthquakes poor vegetation okay and human modification of land okay so these are basic information about landslide hazard okay and if you want to go deeper into this landslide you can look in under the what causes this landslide okay so if you look at different uh, findings you'll find most of the natural factors are caused by weak soil and rock material okay fractured rocks loping ground shallow rooted vegetation and rapid erosion so these are the natural factors that causes landslide okay and if you look at human causes of landslide is due to six factor over here the excavation of slope okay you excavate a slope construction of a house on steep slope deforestation poor upland agriculture practice poor mining practice and water leakage from utilities okay the one i showed you earlier but it's not on a slope area okay it was on flatland but for water leakage on a hill it's going to be even worse in terms of damage okay so the next one would be on flooding so the natural causes would be of course heavy rainfall okay high tide levels storm typhoon surge lowering of ground due to earthquake and melting of the earth snow and ice caps okay and man-made causes are caused by dam failures blockage of waterways by garbage and buildings okay you introduce a lot of garbage and also infrastructure you're going to have a lot of blockage in the waterways and the last uh, causes by improper design of street drainage okay of course when you have a building you should channel the water in a proper uh, position so if you have an improper design 
So that's where the uh, problem comes in. Okay, we have three different types of floods. Okay, we have sheet floods, okay, which is long duration, flash flood, short duration, and coastal floods. Okay, so when you talk about coastal flood, it's more concentrating on the coastal areas. So the next geotechnical hazard is on coastal erosion. So from this newspaper cutting is uh, villages live in fear of coastal erosion. Okay, so initially it was a hazard because uh, there's a building and next to a weak, uh, weak stratum over here, and then it turned to a risk when this one get eroded. So this creates a high risk for the community living in this area. Okay, so this is a typical scene you can see all along the. Uh, east coast of Peninsula Malaysia, which covers from the uh, the end of Kelantan going down to Terengganu and going down to Pahang. Okay, and what they did is just to throw uh, a wall of boulders along this uh, beach area. Okay, doesn't look nice at all. You see, but it is effective effective in. Um, to prevent from more erosion takes place okay so think about it think of other solution that can be better than this okay this is just dumping big rocks in in front of a nice area okay right so malaysia is blessed with a lot of natural surrounding natural settings okay you have a, a beautiful mount kinabalu over here okay so take a take a chance to go uh, strolling in Malaysia, and you can see a lot of these nice settings over here, and you appreciate more about this. Okay, and the only thing you need to do is to preserve all these type of settings. You don't even have uh, to do changes in this because it actually stabilizing all the um, environment that we have right now. And also we have a uh, nice setting along the coastal area. Uh, you have talking about blue seas and all these natural uh, settings over here. And a little bit of building is okay, but not too much. So try to preserve as much natural uh, setting in the future. Okay, now we're going to look at another type of uh, geotechnical hazard, which is on subsidence. So this is a lowering of the land surface caused by a variety of man-made and natural causes as well. It may be slow or abrupt. Okay, so you have the uh, initial position of the land and it become lowered. Okay, due to we have uh, underground erosion, ground shaking, and natural compaction. This is under natural causes, and for man-made causes, it's due to overpumping of groundwater. Construction of heavy infrastructure on the soft soil and also ground shaking due to human activities. So that's subsidence. Next, we'll look at earthquake hazards. Okay, so earthquake can actually uh, induce lateral spreading and also liquefaction. So liquefaction is a phenomenon where a soil strength and stiffness are reduced by ground vibration caused by earthquake. Okay, it's the changes of uh, solid state of soil into liquid state of soil. Okay, so that's liquefaction. So this is uh, another type of, uh, it's not common in Malaysia, but in our neighboring country, yeah, in Indonesia, volcanic hazards. Okay, so it gives rise to numerous geologic and hydrologic hazards. So due to this volcanic, it induces geologic and also hydrologic hazards. Right, the things that we need to come up with is actually information. And this is actually your part in the future to identify different location with its hazard. So here, this is in term of hazard map. So it shows the first one is on historical landslide location. So whenever there's um, 
location of landslide they will just uh, point it over here and then they also uh, have these different types of rocks because whenever they have landslide it relates to the type of uh, soil so the, the, the yellow color shows granite and the orange is metamorphic rock metamorphic rock okay and the next hazard map Okay, they extended the study and they produced a landslide map proposed in the previous study. Okay, they just predict that the red will actually contribute to a high risk of landslide, whereas the low will be of low risk. So this is something you can come up with. Of course, there's some technical background that support this uh, contour. Okay, so this is a study that you conduct. You can conduct in the future. Okay, we can have a maybe landslide hazard sinkhole hazard and any other hazards okay you all can turn in the map and give the community some overall picture of hazards in the local setting okay so here's another map produced which is in tsunami hazard okay it's as simple as this one so this is based on just lines okay the green color indicates a low uh, tsunami uh, whereas if you look at the uh, yellow color uh, I mean the yellow to red color is getting high okay this is based on the remember the 2004 event in Aceh so we had a tsunami event in Kedah okay uh, which actually induced a uh, wave up to 3 meter high okay so this area over here okay so from here just using a line you can actually uh, indicate which um, a line is safe or not okay so this is as simple as uh, a line indicator so it is based on this um, information tsunami information and then they just uh, make a contour which is the safe and high risk zone for this okay right the different hazard discussed pose a significant and serious threat to the country requiring government planners, scientists and engineers, which is you, to consider our safety. Okay. So I hope you learn a lot from this geotechnical hazard that it is time to actually wake up from your sleep and contribute to the development of the nation. Thank you very much.